morning, everyone. I'd like to begin by reading from Psalm 33, verses 12 through 22. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice. For we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Well, I want to welcome you today to our service, both here in person and those of you who are tuned in online. We have gathered here today on the anniversary of our nation's birth, and we want to celebrate God's goodness and all that he has done in our individual lives in the life of our church, in the life of our families, and in the life of our nation. So we certainly want to celebrate God's goodness today. We want to thank him for the abundant blessings that he has entrusted to us, that he has called us to be good stewards of. And we also want to have some time today where we confess as individuals, as a church, and as a nation, and we lament as individuals and as a church and as a nation. We confess and we lament that we are not always living the way we should, that we are not always aligned with God's purposes the way he would want us to be, that there are things in our individual lives and histories as well as in our nation's history that we grieve today and we want to continue to pray would be healed in our land. So we are here on this wonderful 4th of July to seek after God together to pray to him, to do exactly what the Bible says to do, which is to turn to him, to seek his face, and to pray. So this is a little different service than we are typically used to. We have planned this for quite a while, that we might uh, seize the occasion of the 4th of July to call our people into prayer and into a time of celebration and rejoicing and repentance. The flow of today's service is based on the word pray, sort of the word pray. It's got two R's the way we're using it today, P-R-R-A-Y. Some of you are familiar with an app called Lexio 365, and they use this word pray every day to kind of guide through a time of prayer. We've modified that a little bit, but those are the five stages of our time of prayer today. The P, the first phase, will be a time of pausing, gathering ourselves, centering ourselves in our identity as the people of God, brothers and sisters in him. We'll then move into a time of repentance, the first R, and then a time of rejoicing, the second R, at which point we'll come to the A, which is a time of asking, a time of interceding and asking God to show up in a variety of ways. And then we will end our time with a brief time of yielding, where we surrender ourselves and we surrender whatever is on our heart, whatever is burdening, burdening us, we, we surrender that to God. So this is a time for us to pray together to do the work of worship, as it's sometimes put together, to begin this 4th of July celebration, remembering in the language of Psalm 33, that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. He is our help and shield, and we trust in his holy name. This won't be a service where those of us who stand up on this platform will be delivering things to you. Rather, we want to invite you to enter in and be a participant and a prayer in this gathering time. So later on, you can see these microphones. It's been a while since we've done this, but you will have the occasion to come forward and to lead the rest of us in a prayer for whatever is burdening your heart today, whatever you are carrying, if it relates to you and your individual life, your family, our nation, you'll have an opportunity to come and lead us and pray and bring us to the presence of God and pray for these things. We'll do that a little bit later on. You'll notice up in the front there is crosses on both sides, and there are kneelers there. This is one of those services where anytime you feel like you want to, we want to give you permission to get up out of your chair, 
move up into one of these corners. If you want to, spend some time kneeling and praying for a concern you have. If you want to just sit up there, uh, just to be there in the presence of God in a way that maybe is more meaningful to you, there's great freedom in today's service for you to do that. And we would encourage you at any time during any particular part of the service to feel the freedom to do so. So I want to ask you as we enter into this time of pause to begin to just think about how hectic it can sometimes be to just walk into this room, especially on a day like today. Your mind's thinking about how long do I got to cook the ribs, smoke the ribs, right? Our minds are elsewhere. We're thinking about all these things. We're grateful for our nation. We grieve things about our nation. And are we going to run in and all of a sudden be present to God, be present to each other? I mean, that's just hard to do. So I want to ask you to close your eyes for a second as we kind of pause, as we get ourselves into a place of prayer and a place of wanting to encounter God. Again, you have permission. Sit on the floor if you want. Move off to the sides if you want. If you're more comfortable there, if that puts you in that place, of course you can come forward either in the corners or anywhere you want and just simply uh, be in the presence of God. Sometimes it helps us to pause when we let our imaginations enter into the picture. Helps us to be attentive when we slow down enough to think about what it is that we are thinking about. So I want to invite you today as we're just in this place of preparation and of pausing, I'd like you to think about something that makes you smile. doesn't have to be some big spiritual thing. Something that when you see it, it makes you smile. It grabs your attention. I watched two children during the mini arts camp showcase on Friday morning two weeks ago who were in the dance track. And they were weaving and bobbing and moving with such unbelievable joy. And I sat right where you are and watch them, watch their faces, watch their hand gestures. And it made me smile, and it relaxed me. I found myself letting go of burdens. I found myself being led by children to be joyful, to relax. Sometimes posture matters. Again, feel the freedom to sit on the floor. I would encourage you, just as we think of those times in the Bible where people met God, Moses, for example, at the burning bush, it might be of help to you to kind of engage your body in today's service to take off your shoes. You don't have to, but if you want to, to imagine that we are in God's presence and we are going to pray to him to take off your shoes as though we are on holy ground. And then I would encourage you to be attentive to your breathing or to maybe say it a little different way, to be attentive to the fact that you are alive, that you are here, that you exist, and most of all, that God's presence is here with us, and he reminds us of his presence by giving us the breath of life and breathing into us the breath of life. I'd like us to just meditate for a moment on Psalm 116.7. You can keep your eyes closed. It's not very complicated. If you want to open them, it is on the screen. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. A couple days ago, I was sitting out in front, and I came upon this verse at my house, and it just spoke to deep places in me of where I'm at. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. If we were going to use this as a breath prayer, when I breathe in, I say, return to your rest, my soul. And when I breathe out, for the Lord has been good to you. I invite you to do that in quiet on your own. As you breathe in, return to your rest, my soul. And as you breathe out, for the Lord has been good to you. Return to your rest, my soul. For the Lord has been good to you. Return to your rest, my soul. 
for the Lord has been good to you. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be with you. It makes us smile to imagine you here with us, even with all our humility and brokenness and sinfulness. We're grateful that our soul's rest is in you. And your presence is here with us today. We pray to hear your voice. We pray to minister to one another. And we pray for your goodness to be present here. In Jesus' name.
Please be seated. We come now to a time of confession and repentance. And in our relationship with the living God, confessing our sins and receiving forgiveness is not a transaction. It can't be because forgiveness is the land that we already live in. We are the redeemed and by virtue of his forgiveness, we are being transformed but we are still fallen creatures. We still sin. We do that which we know we should not do. We also discover as God matures us that some of the things we've been doing that seemed fine are actually not fine, but sinful and counter to God's good intentions for us and for the world. So to confess means to acknowledge or agree with God that we have indeed sinned. It's that simple. It's to recognize before God and with God that our actions were indeed sinful. And confession is a normal and amazing part of the life of everyone who belongs to Christ. Confession is not a repair job. It's not some sort of penance. It's simply a part of a loving relationship between us and God. In that relationship, we trust him. We trust what he says about the choices that we make are true. And we are honest with him about the choices we've made. That trust and honesty are required for him to be able to grow us. That is what the Apostle John means when he says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That purification is simply his ongoing work of conforming us to the image of Jesus. So as we enter a time of confession, understand that this is not a hoop to jump through but an amazing interaction between you and the king of the universe, the living God. Now, closely associated with confession is repentance. Repentance is essentially turning from our evil ways to God's ways. It may be accompanied by feelings of remorse or guilt or even agony or no feelings at all. The feelings are not repentance. Repentance is the turning away from sin. It is a change of mind and attitude that is then reflected in changes in behavior. So as we go to prayer, I recommend that you get physically settled, whatever's comfortable. Take a couple of deep breaths. And understand where you are in the throne room of the king of the universe who is crazy about you and has already given everything for you. So first, consider your words. Language is immensely good and immensely powerful. Are there ways that you are using words to harm instead of protect or to control others instead of build them up? If so, agree with God about how you are misusing words and ask him to show you a better way. Next, consider your sexuality, which is also immensely good and immensely powerful, which is why it gets particular treatment in scripture. Who is in charge of your sexuality? Is God Lord here? If not, agree with him that he is the rightful and trustworthy Lord of your sexuality. Ask him to simply show you his way of sexuality. It's no more complicated than that. Next, consider your important relationships, those one-on-one relationships to which we attach hopes and dreams or deep disappointments and hurts. 
relationship with a child, a parent, a boss, a colleague, a fellow traveler, a leader? Are you depending on someone or something here to establish your satisfaction and joy rather than looking to God? If so, agree with him that you have replaced him with another. And ask him to show you what it means when the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd, I will lack nothing. Ask God to show you how that works. Let's consider the other, the one who is in some way not like you. Do you look down on any class of people? The homeless, the poor, the wealthy, another ethnicity, the conservative, the progressive, the foreigner? Do you diminish them in your mind or your words? If so, agree with him and ask him to show you more about how he feels about the other. And finally, let's consider our idols. An idol is anything other than God that you depend on to ensure that your life goes well. Is it your money, your clothes, your house, your appearance, your nation, your political viewpoint, your child, your accomplishments, your hard work, the right man, the right woman? All of these contain good things. The only thing that our enemy has to work with are the good things that God has created. So our enemy twists those good things and presents them to us to worship. If you have an idol, agree with God. Ask him to show you his true worth and how you can relate to good things without depending on them for your well-being. As we close, hear God's word to you in Psalm 103. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we our dust. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. So we've gone through pause, and we've gone through repent, and now we're up to the second R, which is rejoice. So let's all stand. For our call to rejoice is based on Psalm 84 this morning. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is his blameless. Blessed are those whose trust, who trust in you. We worship you, Lord God Almighty. together. Within your breath. 
We want to continue in this spirit of rejoicing and celebrating what God has done for us as we prepare ourselves to come to the communion table and celebrate this table and what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. He, Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're reminded as we come to this table that as followers of Jesus Christ, as men and women and children who have put our confidence in him, we are declaring, we are proclaiming, we are celebrating that we are first and foremost his beloved son, his beloved daughter, we are citizens of his kingdom, first and foremost, as we live on this earth. And we celebrate with gladness that in his kingdom, as we are in Christ Jesus, nothing can ever separate us from his love that just relentlessly pursues us. So we come to the table today with this celebration and rejoicing in God's love that has reconciled us to himself. So if you are a follower of Jesus, we invite you to celebrate this meal 
together. We're not quite ready to have people come forward as we have done in the past. Hopefully, I'm looking for a head nod from somebody. I see Kathy's got her little juice and cup. So we handed those out. I had this fear that I'm going to say all this, and you're going to go, we didn't get any cup and juice. So I'm glad that you have your, your, your communion elements, as we always do, and we do on purpose. We remember that this is a communal meal, that we are a people, that we live in this world as a community of faith and through our life with each other, our interactions, our love for one another, our respect for one another, even in our differences, that we manifest shalom and God's goodness as a community. So when we come to the table, we want to eat this meal, not just as individuals, but as a community of people who are bound together in and through Jesus Christ. So invite you as we go through our liturgy, there will come a point uh, uh, where we will stop and Emily will lead you in the eating of the bread and then we will say the words of institution for the cup and I will lead you in the eating of the uh, drinking of the cup and we will eat the bread and we will drink the cup together as a community of faith. So let me ask you to close your head, uh, close your head and bow your eyes. <laughs> and anyone who can do that, it's a tithe free day for you. Close your head and bow your eyes. If you get that, you get the key to the church. Let's prepare ourselves to come to the table today with a moment of silence. If you'd give your attention to the screen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. Lord Almighty, our King and our God, today our souls yearn, even faint for your presence. And even if our lips were not, will not form the words, our hearts and our flesh will cry out for the living God. The trees of the field clap their hands to applaud you. The mountain and hills burst forth in song to praise you. The flowers of the field raise their blossoms in exultation. The birds of the field soar and dive in pure joy in your presence. Some days, we who are your people are strangely silent. But today is not that day. We will rejoice. Hallelujah. Lord, your life pours into us and overflows to us. Like rain in the summer heat, you refresh us for the journey. A journey with your presence as its destination. Your nearness is our good. We are blessed to come close to you. We will rejoice. Hallelujah. Therefore, we join our voices with the angels and all of creation, with all those you have redeemed from every time and place, who forever sing the glory of your name. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory faithful good and worthy full of grace and truth blessed be your name mighty god you are holy o god of majesty and blessed is jesus christ your son our lord at this table we celebrate that first communion where jesus said to his disciples i have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Your eager desire for unhindered fellowship with your disciples, which Jesus demonstrated on the cross, is unchanged. We are handfuls among billions in your care, yet you are mindful of us. You did not spare your own son, but gave him up for us all, and along with him graciously give us all things. How incredible to think that your love moves you so much. We rejoice. Hallelujah. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, arrested, and sentenced to death, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. So with gratitude in our hearts, let us eat together. When supper was over, 
Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and drink it, for this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. With gratitude, with worship, let's take and drink together. And as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we do proclaim the kingdom and we proclaim the Lord's coming until he comes again. May our lives be resurrection lives, always proclaiming the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. It's in prayer. Abishek, come lead us. Dear Lord, I thank you for your blessings upon us. Your abundant love surrounds us and helps us in this world. I thank you for your grace in all things. I thank you for Oak Hills Church, which has helped me grow. I would like to thank you for my friends who make my day very fun. I also thank you for my parents who love me and take care of me. I thank you for our wonderful pastor and teachers who help us grow spiritually and physically. I would also like to thank you for all the people who work to fight the coronavirus. So I thank you once more for your abundant love on this wonderful holiday that celebrates the USA's 245th birthday. Amen. Amen. We are moving into the, the A part of the pray uh, process we're in, and so we're going to enter into a time of asking, of asking God to intervene, asking God to uh, forgive us, praying for ourselves or on behalf of others or for our nation. And this is really the time when we want to invite you to be prayers and to lead us in prayer. I mentioned earlier these microphones are here, and in a minute I'm going to come back up and I'm going to kind of uh, lead us into this prayers of the people time. But this is an opportunity for us in all of our differences, with all of our diversity, different things we care about, to pray and bring these concerns to God and lead the rest of us in these prayers. So be thinking about what God may lay on your heart uh, to pray, uh, to lead us in prayer on in a moment. But to begin with, as we kind of kick off this asking time, uh, Angela Hauk is going to come, and anyone here who is uh, in the category of a child, a children, that can go up to the age of Greg Rosler or down to <laughs> as little as you want. So uh, anyone who is a child, come forward. Angela is going to lead them and us in an exercise that will prepare us to be asking, giving God our requests. So come on forward. Don't be shy. You can sit on the ground or wherever Angela instructs. Yeah, I don't want to be lonely up here. Hi, guys. You want to take a seat? You can sit here on the steps or on the stage. I don't care. Wherever you're comfy. That's awesome. I got friends. We are moving into the prayer part of our service. Do you guys pray sometimes? Like at dinner time or at bedtime? Do you have prayers that you um, can recite? The Lord's Prayer, that's a good one. I know that in children's ministry, that's one that you guys work on learning. Or there's little prayers like, God is great, God is good. Does anybody know that one? That's one we prayed when I was a kid. God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food. <laughs> it doesn't quite rhyme. 
<laughs> it doesn't rhyme, does it? <laughs> well, Jesus, yeah, that's not a word, food. <laughs> Jesus thought prayer was really important because prayer was talking to God, his father. And he took time to make sure that his disciples knew how to pray. And the Lord's Prayer is one of those prayers that he taught them. If you learn how to do this, it's got all the basics in it. We also use all kinds of things like the little prayers we pray at bedtime or at dinner time. Or sometimes when we're having a hard time being patient with our parents or our siblings, right? The short prayers that say, God, help me be nice. <laughs> we don't have to use big fancy words sometimes to ask God for what we need. Sometimes short and sweet is just right. But we can use all kinds of tools. And have you guys heard us talk about Lectio Divina? I don't know what that means, but no. Okay, that's, well, that's why we're having this chat. He says, I don't know what that means, so no. Lectio Divina is Latin, and we don't talk in Latin words very often. If you like to read um, Harry Potter books, there are lots of Latin-esque words in there. It sounds like a magic spell. Your dad does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the words in Latin mean divine reading or God-inspired reading. And we can use it to help us use God's word to pray. Sometimes a psalm is a good way to pray. We're going to use this verse from 1 John to help us pray today. And we're going to use um, the Lectio Divina process to help us do that. And I'm going to shorten it and make it really, really simple. Jesus told his disciples, you could ask, seek, and knock, and he would give you what you need. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. So we're going to use ask, seek, and knock to pray with this verse. This verse from 1 John 5.14 says, We are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. I want you to take a minute and ask God, what do you want that would please him? Sometimes we want things that maybe wouldn't please God. Like something bad to happen to somebody who did something mean to us. But what would something that pleases him? Take a minute. What of all the things that you could ask him for would please him? Can you think of something? The coronavirus to go away. That's a good thing to pray for. You don't have to tell me what you think of. But when you've thought of something, then we can ask him for that in prayer. So quietly, could you pray for the thing that you thought of? Dear God, could you please... Bring comfort to my neighbor. Take away the coronavirus. What else could we ask him for? Help for your family. And then we get to knock. What happens when you knock on somebody's door? Yeah, you wait for them to open it, right? You don't open it right away. Maybe if it's your grandma's house and she already knows you're coming. But usually when you knock on the door, you wait. And we can do that in prayer. We can wait and listen for God's answer. God can tell us, I love my people. I am bringing you healing from the coronavirus. I love your family. I will be with you. Can you listen for what God might be telling you? That he will, in confidence, he hears whatever you ask. And he will give you what pleases him.
you hear anything? You remembered something. Sometimes listening helps us to remember. Sometimes listening reminds us to be confident when we're waiting. I'm going to pray for all of us. Father God, thank you that you tell us we can ask you for anything. That you love us and want to do what is good for us. And that we can listen to you. Help us to seek, ask, and knock when we have something to ask you for. We love you and we give thanks that you love us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can go back to your seat, okay? come to the time now where we want to invite you to be part of uh, leading us in prayer, leading the rest of us in prayer. And so this is what we call prayers of the people. Some of you may not uh, know this or it's been a long time since we've done it for obvious reasons, but this is a time when we invite you, the congregation, to come to either one of these two microphones here and lead the rest of us in a prayer. And I think the verse that Angela used, and Karen, maybe you can put that back up there if that's possible. But the verse that Angela used is such a wonderful reminder to us of what we bring before God and what we ask of him as we come to this time of asking. The truth of the matter is it is a very expressed purpose here at Oak Hills to have different people, a different congregation that is made up of different people who care about different things, and, and we want that here. So this time of prayer might have people who are burdened with one thing or another, and you may not be. And I want to invite you to enter into that time of prayer and be carried along by your brother or sister as they pray for something that matters to them and that they believe is aligned with God. So I encourage you to be bold, encourage you to come forward without uh, hesitation, to not be bashful about it. If there's other people there, you can just come up and sit in one of the chairs or just get behind them and, and wait until they're done. So let's have prayers of the people and open it up to whomever would like to come and lead us.
call on someone. <laughs> we don't do that. Father God, I am so grateful that I have been able to be here. I am grateful for every small blessing, seeing my daughter grow in health, rec recovering her health and her strength. I pray. I am thankful for my son-in-law who loves my daughter and loves being a father. I'm grateful for my grandson, Jonah, at 21 months, and the way he's already demonstrating gentleness towards his new baby brother. And I am grateful for this little Micah. Father, most of all, I am grateful for this body of believers who demonstrate how a brother can be closer than, a, a, a friend can be closer than a brother. And as I leave tomorrow, I pray that you will continue on all these many little miracles and all these things I pray in Jesus' name. Others? Again, we've talked about individual, our church, our nation, some other concern you have. Father God, this this year has been a tough year through through our nation uh, with the coronavirus, but it also bought me some blessings. I lived with my parents for about nine months, and then we got the phone call from Mercy Apartments that I got my apartment. And, and I've been living there for about six months. And um, so I pray to this day to keep, keep on this nation, to keep me independent and through you, Christ, amen. Father, we, um, we sometimes especially realize how fragile life is as friends, loved ones, old, not so old, um, are dying. Lord, we ask that you would speak into them, those who trust you already, that you would be so gracious and merciful for those who don't, that they would hear your voice, that they would hear your voice, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness eternally, in your faithfulness um, here with us. Amen. Heavenly Father, um, as this day unfolds, would you help me? Would you help us? to allow us to become more the, the person that you always intended for us to be. And on this day of independence, would you help me uh, be ever more kind and receptive and understanding to those who may not see this day as I see it, and to be present with them, and to just listen if I need to. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, you're amazing. You love me. 
when I don't feel loved. You are strong when I am weak. Thank you for forgiving my sins of the past. Lord, thank you for the COVID relief of all the overtime I've given, taking it away. I don't need it. Thank you for my family, my wife, who loves me. Thank you for my son, that he's found a marvelous wife, a beautiful wedding, and the joys of his heart. Keep him strong. We pray for my daughter that she may find the same. Lord, thank you for this church. It has done amazing things for the love of the people, the hearts, the joy, the comfort. The power of the Lord is my strength. May all things come for the purpose and the glory for the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you um, just for your presence with us this moment. We thank you for your powerful guiding hand in this morning with my brothers and sisters. I pray for the education system. I pray for the children that are in school. I pray for the educators. I pray for the 6.2 million students in California. Lord, as we come off quite a year and a half, I pray that your church embedded in the public education system would reveal your presence, that there would be a sense of hope and strength and embrace. I think of the, this ninth grade student this past week who said, I don't want to return to a classroom, I want to return to a community. So I pray, Lord, for just your love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in every classroom, in every school, in every community. May your kingdom come and may your will be done. I am confident that he hears me when I ask for something that pleases him. Father God, I am deeply grateful for my sons and their difficult wives and my grandchildren. And I ask for an enormous experience of you in each of them Hopefully, uh, as a community, you know, James and Ty together, and Sam and Jane and Sebastian and Madeline together, that they recognize you in a way that they cannot continue to deny that it no longer becomes an argument, but it is a deep internal experience. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you so much for this country that you've given us. Lord, that we live in a place where we're able to worship you freely without government oppression or interference. God, thank you for the troops that you've given us, God, the, the young men and women that have given their lives up, God, for this country that we can live in freedom. God, for those serving right now, God, for those who have given their lives in the same way that you love the church and you've given your life for her. Uh, we pray for the families today, God, of those troops who are deployed, that you would be with not only uh, our servicemen, our, my fellow servicemen that are overseas, that you'd be with them as they serve. God, be with their families as they're without them today. God, be with those families of those servicemen that have fallen. Uh, servicemen and women that have fallen and that you would be with them bring them peace today god and i pray especially jesus that as we live in this nation of this freedom and liberty of religion god that we would see the responsibility that's been given to us 
and that we would be a nation that would set God such a great example for the rest of the world on how to live for you and how to bring people to you, Jesus, in evangelism and praying for our government, God, and, and praying for the revival, God, of the leadership of this country, God, as you've called us to do. God, I pray that during in this, in this free country that we wouldn't be a, a people, God, that would just sit comfortably and do nothing. God, that we would take the responsibility that you've given by putting us in this nation, God, and we would use it to pray and be used as a tool, God, for the revival of this nation and to be ready to be used, God, as missionaries and as people are ready to see many people around this world become disciples and to be used in the ways that you want us to be used, God, as we still have this liberty to be trained and be sent out. God, we thank you for everything that you've blessed us with, and we know that time is coming short, God, if you're coming, and we have a lot of work to do. God, I pray, God, that from this point, Jesus, you would really rise the church up, God, and use us, God, as just to make a huge revival, God, not only in this country, but the rest of this world. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we continue to pray this morning, God, we claim the promise that when we agree on earth on anything, it will be done by you in heaven. And Father, we, we promise as well life to the full, but of course we know that we live in a very fallen and dark world. God, this morning there are some of us in this room that are suffering, that are hurting. God, there's a lot of pain around us. Father, some of us are, are hurting in silence and alone, and I pray for those people. God, I pray, God, you give us peace in our anxious hearts at a time like this, that when we feel alone, when we feel dark, when we feel hopeless, God, that we will see things through your eyes. God, we pray for miracles. God, that you glorify yourselves in the impossible situations that we face today. God, because every one of us is in some situation or knows of a situation that we cannot control. And God, we pray now that you give us faith, and trust in your sovereign, loving hand. We pray for those that are family members, that are sick, that are hurting. God, we pray you glorify yourselves in their lives. Do things that we can't explain. Do things that only you can do to build faith of others. Pray for miracles. Pray for our family members who are ill, for those who are having very difficult times right now. God, those of our neighborhood God, and I pray that us, the family believers, God, that we can see things through your eyes. God, that you can give us peace in our anxious hearts. God, help us to have a faith that transcends everything that's going on around us. And I pray that we can be a light to those around us. We thank you for the amazing power of prayer, God, for Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Sean. Please join me for our community prayer. Heavenly Father, it is good to be together, and it is good to be in your presence. As we close up these prayers of the people, we express our gratitude for the work that you are doing here and in the lives of this congregation. Um, Lord, we look forward with anticipation to seeing that continued work, to seeing how you um, how you respond to these prayers. And Lord, we have been blessed by the prayers of, and the vulnerability of those who have prayed this morning, and we continue to lift up those prayers before you and keep them uh, lifted up. Lord, may you bless those who have prayed, and may you watch over them and their requests. Heavenly Father, as we continue to pray and worship this morning, we take the time now to lay at your feet those things that keep us from you, and the, those things that keep us from each other. So, Lord, we lay at your feet this morning our doubts. Lord, we lay at your feet this morning our insecurities. 
we lay at your feet our pride. Lord, we lay at your feet our ignorance. Lord, we lay at your feet our fear. Heavenly Father, uh, we also pause this morning to think about our country and the holiday that we're celebrating today, the, the 4th of July. Um, and we uh, celebrate living in this country, Lord. We, with its beautiful and its broken history, we are grateful, Lord, for the blessing of living in a country where we are free to love you and to worship you. Um, Heavenly Father, we also acknowledge that living in uh, a country uh, of hundreds of millions of people who have the freedom to do the things that they want is a messy and complicated thing. But we acknowledge this morning, Lord, that we are more than some of our parts, that we can turn to you and trust in you, and that you are bigger than all of that. And so we ask for your blessing upon this country, and we keep our eyes on you so that we may be part of what you're doing uh, throughout this country. Heavenly Father, we pray for our ministry partners this morning. Uh, this morning, we lift up our partners in World Venture in Mozambique. Uh, we ask for your continued blessing on Wellington and Tati and their children, Isaac, Caleb, and Barros. Uh, we pray that you would be with them there right now and that you would watch over them and bless them and keep them. Heavenly Father, we are also thankful for the other expressions of your body throughout Folsom. Uh, Please bless the services this morning and the congregation of Jesus Culture as they seek you and they uh, seek to further your kingdom. We pray that you would watch over uh, Pastor Banning Liebscher and C. Ray Liebscher as they continue to lead that congregation, um, and we just pray that you would watch over them. And finally, Heavenly Father, we pray for our offering this morning. You have blessed us beyond measure, and we are grateful to you, and we give back to you now uh, with gratitude. And we ask that this offering would be a blessing to the work being done uh, for your kingdom uh, throughout Folsom and beyond. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Thank you. 
one more section uh, called yielding where we took some time to yield and surrender but the clock is moving so the why today is going to be the announcements <laughs> and then, then we'll get the why in the whole pray thing we're good to go so I'm going to jump right to that Manuel was giving me mean looks earlier so I'm skipping the yielding going to the announcements three of them we have our missional living uh, experience that Sean Young has been leading us in and our first orientation is Tuesday night at 7 p.m. This is for anybody that has something stirring in them regarding their neighborhood, their workplace, uh, their school, where they want to be a pre the, uh, they want to build a community that is manifesting the presence of Jesus and this is just an orientation to hear more about it certainly clearer than I just outlined it but would encourage you if something's been stirring in you that goes beyond the walls and beyond this address, encourage you to come Tuesday night at 7 p.m. It'll be over in the family auditorium. You can look on the app or the website and get more information on that. Our backpack drive, we have one more week. So next week, if you are so inclined, bring a backpack filled with school supplies. You can drop it off out in the lobby and we'll make sure it gets to a child in town who needs a backpack for the upcoming school year. This is really cool. This really goes to uh, what Sean is going to be talking about, some of the things he's going to be talking about tomorrow night or on uh, Tuesday night. And that is this new thing that we're starting called Park Days. It's called Oak Hills Park Days. And all parents, grandparents, caregivers are invited to bring their children to, out into the community to play. And this first one is going to be happening at BT Collins Park in Folsom. And it is Monday, I believe that is July 12th. It will be happening at 9 a.m. Contact Kelly Gladson for more details. And again, where's this coming from? Someone in our congregation thought it would be a great idea for parents and grandparents and caregivers to get together in a park, in the community, and see what God might do within that context. This is a marvelous example of seeking to live a bit more on mission. So you can look at the app, look on the website, and get more details and contact Kelly. And I'm told nut-free snacks will be provided, so I might show up. So anyway, <laughs> last announcement has to do with our offering update. About a month, six weeks ago, I mentioned to you that we were facing a bit of a challenge. We were down 15% in our offering from last year and uh, weren't too concerned about it. There's lots of reasons for it, but we set about the process of wanting to talk more upfront about money, more upfront about giving, encouraging people as they come back to begin to give. And we had been bringing in in our monthly offerings up until June, somewhere in the neighborhood of 85 to 90,000 a month. We need about 103 to make our expenses. So we were 15% down in our giving from last year, but our expenses had also uh, been in excess of our income year to date. I can't uh, tell you how fun it is to be able to report that in June, our regular offering was $134,000. So that just blew away what we expected. And you can clap, that's worth clapping for. 
And then our mid-year offering, you may recall in June we received a special mid-year offering that went to our general fund. That brought in $37,000. So that's $171,000 to our general fund in one month, which reverses the 15%, turns us from being in the red to being in the black, and it's just really good news, fun news to report. It's good that we bind to, uh, bond together in these ways, and, and we certainly did. We're thankful to God, and we're thankful for your, those of you that have participated in this as well. So what do you think? Should we can it or go to the end? Go to the end. We do what we need to do. All right. Well, here's what we need to do. And then you guys can do whatever you want after this. Where is Lorraine in Spain, Rothenburg? Lorraine, why don't you come up here real quick? I love that the tables have turned. So, So Lorraine, many of you don't know, but Lorraine has been here like 94 years. How many years have you been here? On staff? Yeah. 21. 21 years on staff. And we have a uh, quote unquote policy that we never follow, but it's a policy that uh, staff people are, have a sabbatical uh, every now and then. And Lorraine had one. When's the last one? Seven years ago. Seven years ago. So it's every seven years we allegedly get a sabbatical. And uh, this is Lorraine's final Sunday until about the middle of September. She's going on sabbatical for about two and a half months. And you know, as much as I know, I, or maybe you don't, but I know that Lorraine is so much the heart and soul and engine of this church. And many of you know, from a human perspective, when you want to talk to someone, get something done or need help, you call Lorraine and something happens. And so... We are incredibly blessed to have Lorraine in, in the role she has as a, our care pastor. You have done this so well for so long, and I know that you are kind of, sort of, yeah, maybe a little looking forward to this sabbatical. <laughs> and you should be, because you have given yourself so faithfully. Um, Lorraine is going to be shutting her phone off, shutting her email off, so we're not going to be able to get a hold of her. Here's might what implode. <laughs> But here's what that means. Don't any of you have a care need till mid-September? <laughs> and then when she comes back, you call up, and Lorraine will take care of it. Well, we're, I'm just really grateful for you. I know the church is grateful for you. Can we express to Lorraine how much she means to us? So if I can ask, ask you to remain standing, and we are going to pray for Lorraine as she begins this sabbatical that God would refresh her. So join me, let, extend your hand toward Lorraine, and let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful for Lorraine, for who she is, for her and Greg, for the way they have sacrificed and given themselves uh, to us at this church in so many thousands of ways that are visible and invisible. So we pray over the next couple of months that this would be a time of refreshment for Lorraine, a time of renewal, that in profound ways you would show up and meet her in times of quiet, in times of rest, in times where she and Greg can be together and simply enjoy life in one another. So we're thankful for this opportunity that she has and we pray that there would be uh, much refreshment and good as you encounter her over the next couple of months. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you. All right. Um, in honor of Lorraine being here, there, or uh, this being Lorraine's last Sunday, it is also, by the way, Ashley Hansen's last Sunday. <laughs> Slightly different reason in Ashley's case. She's going on maternity leave uh, until about the same time, until about mid 
September. So we have ice cream sandwiches in the back and other kinds of ice cream in honor of this and kind of a way to, great way to kick off the 4th of July. Start at the end and then when you go home you can come back to the beginning and have steak or whatever. But we'll start with dessert and then get home later. So thanks for being here today. Happy 4th of July and may the peace of Christ be with you all. Like home.